Hello everybody, Chris here, and in this video, we're going to be going through the process of creating a basic table inside of Blender. So I'm gonna be basically going A to Z for the modeling process without using any reference images, hence it's gonna be kind of basic. But this should give you an idea of the types of things you're gonna to need to do in order to create your own furniture uh, in your own project. So feel free to follow along. As you can see in the bottom left over here, I do have screencast keys enabled and I'll try to talk about what I'm doing as we go ahead and do it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is hit uh, Shift C, which is going to center the cursor in the point 000 inside of the Blender interface. Also notice that I am in top orthogger, uh, well, top orthographic view, yeah, I'm sorry, um, which means that it's looking straight up on it. It has no perspective skew, um, and therefore we are looking directly on top of the scene. Um, so by doing that, it allows us to add things like a plane if you want to be incredibly basic, or in this case, I'm going to use a cylinder, uh, where the cylinder will be placed perfectly um, from the top perspective. So this is a perfect uh, cylinder that's going from the top to the bottom, uh, vertically on the Z axis. So I'm using the middle mouse wheel to kind of pan around the scene, as you can see. Um, let's take this uh, box over here to the right so we have a little bit more space in the viewport. Okay, didn't actually mean to do that. If you do accidentally hide this bottom bar, you can hit the plus sign. Um, so now we have a, a cylinder here and you can of course change some of the parameters in the cylinder uh, and add cylinder which will pop up until you actually make edits to the cylinder. It should be here. I like changing its position or whatever. Um, so radius, that's going to be uh, basically the width of the cylinder and depth is going to be the height in this case and vertices will be the number of vertices. Now if I was trying to do a very simple cylinder, something that doesn't need much detail because it's super tiny and I just want to decrease the amount of faces in my scene, you could drop this down. But I think for something as large as a table base, 32 vertices is fine. You might even want to go higher than that to be honest. Um, so let's see what I'm going to do with this cylinder. I actually could have just used the circle <laughs> now that I think about it. Um, but I'm going to hit tab and I'm going to deselect everything. And what I'm going to do is in face select mode down here, I'm going to select all of these faces except for the ones on top. And I'm going to delete them. So hitting the delete key and then delete faces. And then we're left with a circle. So kind of a stupid way to go around about that. Uh, unless, of course, no, no, no. Even then, uh, you can set the number of vertices that exist in a circle as well. So if you need it to be more uh, kind of squarish, um, rather than having kind of more of a perfect circle, but you want it to be more blocky, then you can decrease the number of vertices. So let's actually go back and do that. So I'm going to go back up to the top of that uh, orthographic view, shift C to put the cursor in the center, circle, and I'm going to decrease the number of vertices. And let's try making it something like um, eight seems good. So now when we actually make this the table base, it'll be obvious where the different sections start. And that might make for a little bit more interesting of a design than just a perfect circle. So with that, um, I'm going to zoom around a little bit with no mouse wheel. And I think what we'll do is I'm going to position this above the base, um, typically zero, zero, uh, basically Zero in the z-axis is where things would touch the ground, and obviously the top of the table is going to be off the ground. So I'll leave that there for now. And I'll go back into the top with the graphic view. And I'm going to pick a spot kind of where we want the legs of this table to be. Um, so that can kind of be anywhere, really, but typically it would be kind of on the outside. So I'm going to add in a plane, and I'm going to scale it down. And we only really want to reconstruct this lag once, so I'm actually going to, in the right hand side, go to the modifiers tab, and I'm going to add in a mirror modifier. Um, okay, so I want this across the x and the y axis, but I uh, noticed that because I was moving the object in object mode, it also moved the origin. So in order to reset the origin back to zero, zero, so that it can mirror across x and y, I have to hit shift C to position the cursor at the center. Um, and in object mode, you go to tools, set origin, and origin to 3D cursor. Now uh, that that's done, we have 
four planes that will serve as the base for our legs. Ah, okay, so let's see. Uh, the simplest thing to do would be to go into tab uh, edit mode and extrude this up. So we can start with that. And uh, if you hit Z while you're extruding, you can make it so it only happens in one axis. Kind of get it up there towards where the base of the table is going to be. Don't have to worry about it being too precise just quite yet. Um, now this circle seems like it needs a face as well. So if you go into edit mode and you have all of these edges selected, that's these lines around in the circle. You can hit F and that's going to make a face using all these edge. Uh, all of those edges. So now we have basically the top of the table. Uh, but of course the top of the table is just flat now. It, it has no depth to it whatsoever. So in, in which case you might have wanted to go with the cylinder. Um, but we can work with this too. So we have this kind of uh, octagonal shape and we can extrude it down by hitting E, Z to make sure that it, it's uh, scaling in the Z axis and kind of scroll it down till we have it on top of the lap base. Now if we hit tab, go into object mode, and we can pan around with middle mouse wheel. And you can see, uh, actually it looks a lot like a stool right now. Um, probably partially due to the positioning and size of the legs, so we can change that a little bit, but it's coming along. Or it could be a side table. I mean, it all has to do with the size. So. Uh, one option would be to just make the top a lot larger. So if we hit S to scale, and then we hit Shift Z to make it so that it can't scale on the Z axis, but it's scaling in uh, X and Y, we can just kind of uh, make this larger without making it taller. Okay, uh, now that that's done, um, the positioning of these legs doesn't really make much sense anymore, so I'm going to select one. Um, and because we have mirror modifier enabled for X and Y axis, we only need to change the position on one ever. So if you hit Control 7, that's going to put you in bottom orthographic view, so we can see uh, the positioning of the legs uh, with respect to the positioning of the larger table. So I can grab this with G. Um, Let's see, and uh, move it along with X, G, and Y to move it along to move it along the Y axis, and that's going to put it kind of on the outer side of the table. Um, now we could stop here if we wanted to, and you have a really basic table. Oh, uh, I guess we'll go a little bit further than that. So some tables have uh, kind of these connecting pieces in between. Uh, kind of give it a little bit more stability and a more interesting look. So what we can actually do here is shift D to duplicate uh, the objects. And I'm going to go into edit mode so that we don't accidentally move the origin point. Um, let me see here. Okay, so the, make sure that this new, these new four planes or the four legs are a separate object. And in edit mode, I'm going to hit rotate. 90 degrees and we want that to be X or Y. It doesn't really matter which. And then I'm going to try to position it at, uh, let's see, zero along the Y axis. So it should be equally over the X axis on both sides. So let's get that there. And if we hit tab again, um, huh, okay, hold on a minute. Okay, so if I go and do this a bit, ah, okay. So yeah, you have to be, okay, I think what we actually need here is reflect on Z. No, that's not gonna quite work there, is it? Okay, so for this connector piece, we can just turn off uh, scale along the Y axis. And uh, what we'll do is we'll get these two pieces finished and then we'll just duplicate them and rotate them. So let's see here, um, tab, and we want to kind of extrude it until it is actually scale along Y. So if we scale the Y, three for right orthographic view as well, so that we can see exactly the positioning it is on both sides. Keep scaling it on Y until it kind of connects across. Uh, it doesn't necessarily need to be perfect. You can use Boolean modifiers to cut shapes out and uh, kind of make sure that they stick into each other. In some cases, that might even be more realistic too. Um, 
And now that we have that, let's see. Yeah, sometimes you just kind of have to look around and see what you're dealing with. So maybe we actually want to make this smaller than the other piece. So I'm going to scale it and hit Shift Y so that it doesn't it doesn't change the length of it anymore. But we're just changing the X and Z axis. And now we're making it so that this is kind of going to be a cutout, a smaller connector piece between these two areas. Um, let's change the viewport shading to solid mode so we can kind of see. And yeah, until you actually make those Boolean cuts, uh, you do get a little bit of overlap there between the meshes. So I'm going to use G and X to move it a little bit more along the X axis. And uh, I guess at this point, what we can do is I'm going to do it in edit mode. Duplicate this piece. Oh, actually, you know what? Uh, we will do it in object mode. I'm going to duplicate this. So now we have plane two. And rotate this 90 degrees. And OK, that's a little bit weird. Uh, 90 degrees on Z, I think. Okay, hang on a second. C Y X. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, rotate 90 degrees on Z. And uh, that's going to basically create identical connectors, just um, flipping the axes around. So now we have four connectors all the way around this table. Um, you can move them up and down if you want. So you can either do that in object mode or in edit mode. Uh, in this case, I would just do it in object mode. And yeah, it moves the origin point, but in this case, it's only the X and Y origin that's actually mattering here for the reflection, not the uh, height, so that's okay. And you can kind of just get the position you want there. Um, that's okay. Maybe I want a little bit more something. Okay, so say that you wanted to actually cut a hole inside of this table in the center. Um, you can extrude and then scale with E and S, but make sure that Z isn't scaling, so also hit Shift Z. So now it's extrude scaling inwards, but without changing the height. And then get it to be the shape you're actually looking for there. Um, okay, now this seems like there's some face overlap, but what we're going to do here is in edit mode, Select these two faces. Okay, it's not lying. Okay, let's actually just select the uh, big face on top first, delete that. The big face on bottom first, delete that. Okay, yep, that was needed. And now we need to delete these interfaces. So delete that and then we should have a hole there. And now we just need to grab this face on top, delete that. And uh, there we go, we created a nice hole inside of the top of the table. Um, I don't know why you might want that. Maybe you like doing a hot pot table or something like that, but uh, just a cool trick you guys can use. Um, so let's see, beyond that, we do want to make sure all of these get connected properly, and we probably want to do that without having any overlap uh, between these pieces as we make them into one final mesh. So I'm going to select these pieces, and first I'm going to apply the mirror modifiers. Uh, before you combine objects, everything should have the mirror modifiers applied, or else when you combine them, you'll lose that mirror modifier, and that's no good. But now if we go into the... Ah, well, we won't see it yet. Um, but if we were to combine them now, uh, there might be... Well, we can actually just do that. So I'm going to select these two. You don't have to do this. And then hit Control j to join them. Um, it's actually not really a, such a big deal there, um, but technically speaking, this piece is going straight into that piece, and there's no hole in the other piece, so that's technically impossible. Um, if you want to avoid that, and you want to be adhering to realistic uh, physics, I guess, then you can select the first one where the hole is going to be, and in modifiers, add a boolean modifier, and we want, I believe, uh, 
intersect. Actually, union would work as well. Um, intersect is going to keep the parts that intersect, and then union is going to combine them. So, like, let's go with union. Select the plane and hit apply. You can always hit Control Z to undo it. So, I'm going to hide this really quick. Okay, not quite ideal, but what happened was uh, because that part that was sticking in was actually impossible, um, when it combined the meshes, it just stopped right there at this edge. Uh, but the downside is it did create some kind of weird connecting lines here, so I'm actually going to undo that. Okay, so these should be, okay, keep going until they're separate. Okay. Okay, that's fine. And now I think we want intersect. Uh, nope, sorry, turned wrong again. Difference. Select that. And uh, if we were to hide this, you can see now that there is a basically a hole in that. Ah, okay. So there's a there's a little bit of weirdness too, because um, this part here is actually overlapping with this part. So I'm gonna hit. Alt H to rehide, uh, reshow them, and let's see here. So I'll select this part, and uh, we're going to kind of move them out so that these areas where they're going to cut doesn't overlap. So because we have to do both sides, and I'm going to do it manually, uh, we want to type in a very specific number here. Uh, so I think I'm going to do negative zero point. Zero zero five. Nope, that's a little too little. Uh, negative zero point zero two, and then I'll do that same thing with all the other sites. So in this case, it's going to be zero point zero two because we're going in the other direction, and here it's going to be. Grab y 0 0.02. Actually, that's negative. Okay, and finally here, grab y. Grab y 0 0.02. Okay. And now we can check the boolean again. So I'm going to hide this so that we can see that hole. And uh, there's no issues there now. So all h to be show uh, the hide it. Or we show it, sorry. And we also need to do a Boolean with this one over here. So I'm going to copy the Boolean modifier. And I'm going to select this plane instead. So now if we add this and we add this, you can see all of these four pillars have their own holes perfectly cut, no issues there. I'll H to rehide everything. And now what we can just do is apply the, move, the Boolean modifiers and if we were to hide this, we still have the holes. Um, since all the modifiers are applied, we can combine them. So, Control J. Okay. And just to be sure, these pieces you can see still independent. And if we move them out, we can still see the hole inside of there. So, uh, technically speaking, having pieces like this is a lot more realistic because uh, we can't have things go through other objects that's not physically possible. Um, so now we have that. Um, now we can pretty much do the same thing for the top of the table too. So I can drag this down a little bit, in which case, if we hit tab, go into edit mode, uh, the base legs of the table are actually sticking through it. So we do the exact same thing, Boolean modifier, difference, and we select the bottom object. If we want to prove it, we hide the bottom areas. Uh, and it looks like I haven't combined part of it too, so we'll have to finish that up. Uh, but the holes in the top of the table are there properly, so can hit Control Z to rehide and uh, apply that Boolean modifier. And now we just select everything else, hit Control J, and we have a pretty basic table model, uh, pretty much perfectly modeled, no issues, no weird lines uh, or faces or anything like that. And uh, you can texture this pretty much how you want. Uh, but that's going to be it for this video, so 
Uh, thank you guys for sticking with me, and I hope that I was able to make it at least reasonably comprehensible, and I will see you guys in my future video content.